Right, so we've been looking at GDP and we've defined it and we've seen the importance of it. Now we're going to look at two different ways of measuring GDP, the expenditures approach and the income approach. Remember that we are looking at a circular flow of funds, right? So when we want to look at the value of goods and services produced in the country, in other words, the value of GDP, we can either measure that value in terms of the money that was spent on the GDP or in terms of the income that was earned by providing the factors of production that went into producing the goods and services. The value of whatever is on this side must be the same as the values of whatever is on that side. In other words, the expenditure must be equal to the income. So, going back to where we were. our expenditure approach. Right. The expenditure approach says that we measure GDP in terms of all the different types of spending, which was household spending, consumption, investment, government spending, exports, and imports. Let's look at those in a bit more detail. Consumption is spending by households. Investment is essentially spending by firms. What do they spend on? They buy machines and equipment, they construct uh, factories and they build up their inventories. Then of course we have government spending and remember that transfers are not included in this figure because transfers are simply a transfer of value from one place to another. There's no production that happens. When government provides a social grant, that social grant is not in lieu of some production that is going to happen or has happened. It's simply a transfer of value from one point, uh, from one party to another. There's no production that happens, therefore it cannot be part of GDP, because GDP requires production. Right? Then what about foreigners? Foreigners buy our goods, therefore we must include the value of exports, in other words, the value of goods that we send out of the country. Although we've sent them out of the country, they were produced within the country. Right? Therefore, the value of exports must be part of our GDP. Then we've got imports. In other words, households, investment, government, they can all be spending money either on goods made within the country or by buying goods made outside of the country. If they bought goods from outside of the country, that is an import. If it was bought from outside of the country, however, that is not our GDP, that is someone else's GDP. Those goods were produced somewhere else. Therefore, any spending that was on goods from outside of the country, in other words, imports, must be subtracted from the spending that these guys did. So GDP expenditures approach, C plus I plus G plus X minus M. Right? What about the income approach? The income approach says, okay, well, what income is earned from providing the fa factors of production that go into GDP? Well, we have households earning wages. Some households might also earn rent and interest. Then we've got firms earning profits. Those firms could also earn interest and rents. And then we've got taxes, right? So government earns taxes. We have to add the taxes back to the profit and the wages because obviously any wage that you earn gets taxed, any profit that, you, that firms earn gets taxed. But within firm profits are also transfers of funds from government to firms which we call subsidies. In other words, firm may pay taxes to the government and the government may then give money back to the firm. We call that a subsidy. If that is the case, right, then we would be counting subsidies twice if we did not subtract the value of subsidies from the profits earned by the firms. Because remember, a subsidy is simply a transfer of value. There's no production that takes place to the value of a subsidy. Right? We've also got depreciation, which we need to add back into that. Uh, we can come back to that explanation a little bit later when we talk more about investment. But for now, know that we need to add depreciation back to the income that was earned by households and, profit, uh, and firms and government. And then, if we are going to be technically correct, we need to subtract net foreign factor income from any wages that were earned. In other words, if a South African person earned money for doing work outside of South Africa and that formed part of their wages. 
Well, that work that they did outside of South Africa doesn't form part of South African GDP because it wasn't produced within South Africa. If that is the case, we need to subtract that amount from the income that was earned. But we don't have to worry too much about this one. This one's a sort of a, just to be technically correct. So let's just put it together and see. We've got an expenditures approach to measuring GDP or an income approach. Either way, we're going to end up at the same value of GDP. In the expenditures approach, we have C plus I plus G plus what is called Xn, which is X minus M, right? So X little n means net exports, in other words, X minus M. Or in terms of the income approach, we have wages uh, plus profits to firms plus depreciation, adding in taxes, then adding in taxes again, then subtracting subsidies, and we get to the same value. Okay, let's leave it there.